yeah your body is forced to take energy from the fat, fat droplets yes. and once you keep on doing that in extended fasting and all those things then the fat droplets gets deposited into converted into fatty acids and the byproduct is ketones and you can either measure it in the urine or the breath um or even the blood even the blood yeah and uh, actually people think that when you are fasting you will become very uh, dull and you will not be able to focus but actually the focus Opposite increases is true. yes focus increases because brain loves ketones yes you would take on ketone for brain health and more importantly is ketogenic diet recommended for improving brain health so i my my opinion about diets is i think everybody should figure out their own best diet mm. ketogenic diet can be a good diet or can be a bad diet mm. if you are going to eat highly processed foods it can still be ketogenic and if you can eat natural whole foods it can also be ketogenic correct so you can have a healthy ketogenic diet which is probably beneficial but i also think it's important to realize what kind of lifestyle you're leading and adapt your diet according to that mm. so for example if you are doing a lot of cardiac exercise and you're very much on your feet i don't know whether a ketogenic diet is a sustainable diet in the long run so your diet needs to be healthy so it should be whole food preferably have some amount of plant based component enough fiber it should be sustainable it should be something that you can sustain for the rest of your life mm. and gives you good health at the mm. same time it's pointless getting into a diet which is unsustainable mm. because that's a failure i mean a recipe for Disaster. failure mm. so ketogenic diet is brain healthy it's it's used in a lot of children who have refractory epilepsy mm. and it's been shown to be beneficial but it's difficult to achieve real ketosis in the real world because invariably some carbohydrates will sneak in somewhere to get a true ketosis is very difficult oh, yeah very diff- my take on that is um one thing we can learn from this literature is brain ketones is good for brain um but practically speaking an indian community sustaining on a ketogenic diet is very difficult difficult is very difficult and there are studies actually say long term ketogenic diet has some cardiovascular deleterious effect as well okay um so i usually say that any diet similar to you any diet which is sustainable is the way to go but one thing we can take out from this literature is that as you said refractory epilepsy where they have seizures hmm. and when you don't feed carbs to the brain yeah. the brain actually does well on ketones yes. where the seizure disorder goes down yes how we can translate that is hey no you don't have to be on keto how about limiting your carbohydrate intake yes always a good idea I think. always a good idea <laughs> on any speciality yes. as we talked about <laughs> on any speciality in my field in gastroenterology we have seen that uh, the more carbohydrates that you take okay so i did this small research within my my limits where i have a lot of south indian patients i i'm just curious to see how much amount of carbs that they are taking mm. <laughs> even on a healthy diet yeah not even unhealthy they're not eating pizza pizza nothing they're just eating regular channa rajma vegetarian home cooked food home cooked food yeah home cooked food good carbs like home cooked goods a normal average of that 100 patients is 300 grams per day that's insane the 300 grams per day the reason is a south indian community as you know we have like sambar rice yeah rasam rice yeah. and then curd rice curd so rice. they don't know the amount of rice involved it's not that rice is bad but the amount is the key so what we as an awareness thing what we did was okay so we asked them to document on a daily basis we didn't ask them to change anything In the next visit we showed them look at this this is 300 grams and we showed this study as well we said you know your brain works better on low carb so we said that okay instead of doing you want three you are doing 300 cups keto is less than 20 can we meet somewhere in between at 150 what do you say and then they were like okay i'll do for 250 <laughs> <laughs> I read somewhere recently that uh, you don't actually require more than about 140 grams of carbohydrates per day. Yes, for a normally active person, 130 but, to 140. Mm. But most people consume way more than that. Way more than. And uh, most people are not even aware. And this high carbohydrate consumption is what is driving most of the metabolic disease we see today. Of course. Be it fatty liver, diabetes, obesity. neurodegeneration high blood pressure you name it it's all coming from this wonderful the um that is where 
my research on gut microbiome being grown in a good fashion on a yeah. low carb all those things coming in and most important thing you might be interested in this where we are researching what chemical can be produced by the gut bacteria at the intestinal level and that can influence the nts uh, nucleus tracta solitarius to secrete the same amount of chemical at the brain level i see so for example there was a, a study that they said that okay you can actually produce serotonin hmm. at the intestinal level by the bacteria what you want and make sure that it has the same amount of efficacy as an ssri as a medication that gives you the same amount of serotonin levels well actually serotonin as a neurochemical is more dominant in the gut than in the brain ah correct and right. it's a very interesting link that uh, serotonin is predominant more in the gut but has such a nif- significant effect on brain on the brain brain function and how we can find a link between the gut and the brain with the gut bacteria is really fascinating and i hope we get some more clarity on that in the years to come of course i uh, right now we don't have clinical evidence that much so i have a very strong feeling that based on whatever i know and whatever research i'm involved in if you take care of your gut bacteria and make sure that you have a significant proportion of good gut bacteria compared to your bad gut we can completely eliminate depression this is a strong statement but i strongly believe in it where 5 10 years of from now people will say that hey you know uh, you might have to eat this food to increase your serotonin so that you can counteract your depression effects i think things. you're right I think a diet has a very important role to play in mental health. Ha. Huh. The other thing that uh, I was reading about recently is butyrate. Butyrate, yes. Short chain fatty acid which is secreted from the gut 